Okay, here we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of ten. Okay, welcome to uh, CET four ninety seven. Thank you for everyone for getting your project relevance statements in. That was very good. Um, it meant I could uh, prepare a little bit better for um, today's lecture. Um, so that was appreciated. Um, just a reminder, this is uh, streaming live on YouTube because that's the easiest way for me to record these sessions. So if you don't um, manage to make it to a session, there's uh, going to be a, a recording of each session available on YouTube. Um, so hopefully that, uh, that works out. So, um, as I said, today we've got the uh, project relevance statements due, and I have one from everybody, which is good. Um, I do want to uh, get everybody to speak to your individual relevance statements. Um, just be aware that I've edited them a little bit, um, and uh, so they may not look exactly like what you um, submitted, but they should be pretty close. The main thing is to try and put them in, uh, uh, put them as a statement that um, uh, can be said in one or two sentences. Now, um, some of them uh, were actually a little longer than one or two sentences, and that was okay. Um, it's better for these um, for these to be a little bit um, a little bit terse, a little bit um, short uh, rather than longer. The next step is to make things a little bit longer, right? So um, we'll we'll see how how that progresses. Um, I'm actually thinking of adding another thing between elevator pitch and the uh, project proposal. So um, we'll, we'll see how we go. Because uh, I think it might be worthwhile um, looking at what everybody else is interested in to try and um, uh, move things forward, right? We have uh, 10 people in the class and the aim is to form teams to work on three or four projects and so we have to down select. Um, but I still want everybody to have something they're interested in working on. So uh, we'll, we'll see how we go. So that's where we are. We're on uh, February Ninth, and that's where we are. And um, <clears throat> this is the uh, the project relevance statement is the first major deliverable, right on this um, on this slide. Um, I this slide was put together by Professor Broderick. Um, and I've added a few things. I added the functional resume as something that I wanted you to do, um, partly because it's it's a good way to introduce yourself to the rest of the class, right? Um, irrespective of what you're interested in as far as a project is concerned. Um, and I think that's, that's worthwhile doing because this cohort of people is going to be together in the capstone subjects for the whole year, the whole calendar year in this, the case of this cohort. Okay, so just uh, focus in on, on what we're doing. This is the, the design V that is often used for um, development of products or development of services. And we start off 
and I, I, I usually draw a um, up here I usually draw a big cloud right because we don't know what's happening and it's very cloudy and it's very uncertain um, and the idea is that as we go down this side of things we drive out the uncertainty right so this distance here is how uncertain we are so here we are very uncertain and down here we're still a little bit uncertain but we're we're quite certain we're certain enough by the time we get to the bottom of of this side of the V that we can proceed with implementation. Any questions so far? Just uh, no, no, well, good, okay. Uh, so I don't know how um, whether we we know enough yet, um, but. Uh, I think uh, Will is one of the mechanical engineering students and he, he's got a group of students together um, uh, wanting to uh, apply for a NASA grant, right? a Connecticut-based NASA grant. And um, if we decide that there's a, a robotics type um, project that might be interesting for us to do, then that is certainly within the scope of what a, a NASA grant might fund. So um, if you're interested in that, I suggest you join the Discord server. I joined the other day and I made them aware that maybe some of you might be interested. Um, and that would certainly be a, a, a useful way to get funding for what you need to do. Um, there is a little bit of support available from the department um, for projects, but it's relatively minor and the NASA grants tend to be a little larger, probably a factor of 10 larger. So instead of um, I think the department funding is about $150. The NASA grants are usually of the order of $1,000 to $2,000. So it depends on what you want to do and what you need to buy. Um, but it's, it's worthwhile thinking about uh, what you're going to do. And if you want help with uh, that NASA grant application, I'm happy to to lend any support I need to. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to go through, and I hope everybody is here. I think we've got, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got everybody. Very good. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through everybody's, I'm going to show everybody's project relevant statements on the screen. And I'm going to get each of you to either read it out or explain, um, maybe read it, read it out to start with. And then if, if you have any additional comments you want to make um, once you've read out the statement. And bear in mind, like I said, I've edited these a little bit, um, some of them more than others. So uh, don't, be, don't be too surprised at what, what you see. Yeah. It's your, they're your statements, but they're, uh, they may be... Uh, a little bit um, because of the way the the assignment was put together or the test on Blackboard was put together sometimes they didn't necessarily read um, the three sections didn't necessarily read together well so I, I edited it to, to try and make the, them read together okay so um, first up I think we have bright so bright would you mind uh, coming on and uh, reading your statement and if you want to make any other 
comments? All right, sure. So, um, yeah, I wasn't really sure. I'm still not setting what I want to work on, but um, I was so far this is what I was able to come out with. Um, so I'm designing a Raspberry Pi robot because I want to know more about robotics and also know how Raspberry Pi works. I've heard about it, but I don't really know how a lot about it. So I want to get into it. And um, in order to help me improve my knowledge in robotics and gain more skills. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and this this statement is a couple of others as well. I think is kind of interesting from the the uh, the NASA grant perspective. So, um, but we let's let's see how. Thank you, Bright. Let's uh, move on to yeah. next person is Jacob. Jacob, could you uh, read out yours and uh, give us any background information if you, that you feel necessary? No, Jacob. Okay, I might come back to Jacob. Michael, would you uh, mind? Uh... Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, there's Jacob. Hey, Jacob. Okay, sorry. I was trying to figure out my mic issue. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We can hear you now. Go ahead, Jacob. Uh, sorry, what was the question again? I, I couldn't hear properly. Um, basically, what I want you to do is read out your um, edited version of your project relevance statement, and if you can give any other background information that uh, may be maybe help people understand what you want to do. Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Uh, my project's uh, relevant statement was, I'm studying PC hardware because I want to know how all the components work with each other properly to perform tasks as a computer as a whole and which components compiled together would have the best performance aspects to help people in daily tasks, business and gaming wise. Um, Basically, I chose this project relevant statement is because typically I've been building computers since I was about eight years old. So building computers has always been a f fashion statement of mine. Um, always, I and basically I've always wanted to have a better understanding on how it all works together as a whole because I understand how each component works as a separate component, but to understand how it fully works together to be able to make the best performing combination possible is like my dream of mine. So, yeah. Okay. It'd be nice to be able to help other people who don't understand as well as I do, basically. Yep. Yep. No, that's, uh, I think that's uh, an interesting project. Okay. Thanks, Jacob. Thank you. Uh, Michael, we'll go on with you next. You've got... Uh... All right. We go. All right, I'm studying networking in order to understand how to develop or utilize a Raspberry Pi to potentially develop something along the lines of a honeypot or something else similar. Um, I'm not too sure on the specific path. Like, I'm not like really narrowed down to a, speci a uh, specific idea yet, but probably along those lines with Raspberry Pi and doing like kind of something custom or whatnot. Okay. Yep, I think that uh, that could be a, a fun project. We'll have to nail it down a little bit more, but uh, certainly uh, it's a good good starting point. Um, Eric, I think you're up next. Could you uh, read out your statement and give us any background, please? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I am designing a basic and easy to use mo mobile application based smart home security system because I want to provide an affordable way to ensure safety in order for my customer to feel secure regardless of where they are. Uh, my idea behind this uh, one was to start looking into how the Internet of Things works, IoT, and I see a lot of these like home security applications and like Philips using smart home components, Amazon and all that, and they're very overpriced. And I think some people are just looking for some very straightforward things. So I, I feel like that could be something we could look into. 
Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, that could be fun. Um, there's certainly a lot of. I, I've been uh, toying with some little um, uh, Arduino sort of based devices. They're about a buck fifty a pop, and they've got a little Wi-Fi chip on them. You, you'd have to add um, a battery or something like that to them, but it, they've got sensors and things. So yeah, there's 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 lots of stuff we could do there. Okay, thanks, Eric. So next, uh, Michael, could you uh, read through this and uh, give us any background? Okay. <clears throat> um, I am studying computer engineering technology with a keen interest in networking and cybersecurity so that I can understand how I, I can create a solar-powered detachable camera drone that can be controlled through a cell phone and help my customer improve home security by providing extra area coverage from blind spots. Um, so my idea behind this is that um, I've always been interested in drones and um, I just decided to just combine, um, just combine uh, say something solar powered with the drone in addition to providing security to, um, to, to, people's homes i guess because i know that how cameras have blind spots so i just felt like this would, would would help in that uh that aspect yeah yeah i mean there's there's a lot in there um and i i certainly think drones are a an interesting thing to get involved in because um i think they're just going to be used more and more um a friend of mine um works for a company called GoGo Go Wireless. They provide the in-flight uh, wireless uh, Wi-Fi um, in planes. And uh, his job is to go around all the base stations that they have across the US and some up in Canada and uh, uh, inspect and fix all the all of the base stations, the antennae or the amplifiers or whatever. And he's he can't get all the certifications he needs in order to be able to climb all the towers, all the transmission towers. Um, but he can do most of what he needs to do inspection-wise um, using a drone. So when he goes out on site, he, uh, he uses a drone to uh, do all of his inspections and he, he um, gets some, I mean, he's, most of these places are in the middle of nowhere and uh, their their spectacular view. I mean, he, he's mainly looking at the at the the antenna or the tower. Um, but uh, yeah, they're kind of interesting. Okay, no, think... thanks, Michael. Um, Anthony, can you talk about yours, please? Um, so I'd like to preface on why I put the not quite sure how yet, but. Uh... I thought it was due the day of the class. We didn't actually have class. So I wanted to just get something in. Um, so yeah, I'm really interested with uh, security. Uh, specifically because we just I just moved into my new house. And we hooked up maybe about five different cameras. Um, I think it was uh, Michael who said something about blind spots. Uh, I'm also really interested in that. I'd, I'd like to make something that would be able to move on a cycle something like that maybe okay um, to to catch those blind spots yeah exactly or maybe something with a fish eye lens that mm -hmm. would be able to uh see different angles as well right i mean and, and that's one of the things um partly i i at the moment i'm not that keen on um what uh, the the technology we're going to use. I'm I'm mainly looking for um, the problems, and um, then part of what we're going to do next is um, ideation on how to solve those problems. And as as you just sort of went through a little bit, there's lots of ways we could possibly solve that blind spot problem, right? And uh, um, a lot of the, uh, you know, the standard uh, security cameras are, you know, mounted on um, uh, 
gimbals so that they they can they can scan around um, and that that way they cover a lot more area um, you could have it just moving in in some other direction or you could have it mobile like on a drone um, so there's there's lots of ways we could uh, I, I like the I, I actually like the drone idea because that's um, a that's a bit more of a, a stretch and <laughs> yeah. uh, right and uh, the the sometimes the trying to, the the stretch goals are the most valuable you may not get there but um, they're they're often uh, generate the most interest as far as um, uh, most interesting outcomes. So, okay, thanks, Anthony. So, uh, Fahim. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hi. I am designing a parking lot empty space smart sensors which allows drivers how many empty spaces in each level row so that I can save students, workers, and the average persons from wasting time looking for parking space in order to reduce emissions. So my idea behind this is how to build a sensor working as a group with the student and are we going to successful and build this mission because I'm interested, you know, to build something and we successful of it and will benefit a lot of drivers, students and other workers, you know, from looking for empty space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's I, the reason we think about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I like, because, sorry, go ahead. Which make me think about this because you know, it's happened to me a lot of time, and I'm sure it happened to many students, wasting a lot of time looking for empty space, and always I'm late for my classes. Too many of my classes, always I got late to class. Right, right. Yeah, the uh, the parking problem is a... I, every university I've ever worked at has has had a, a problem with parking spaces. Um, yeah, the uh, it's, it's, it's always an issue. Um, I like I like this statement. Um, one of the things we need to get out of our projects is a um, what the motivation is, and um, it would be nice to have you know uh, an impact with what the motivation is, and the motivation to reduce emissions, right, is a is a a big motivation. Um, other motivations are, are, you know, even smaller ones are, are also good, but the aim is to find um, why we're doing it. If we can find why we're doing it, that entices other people to, to get interested. One of the things I'm doing in this class is, um, it, and it's not the aim of the class, but one of the things I'm doing is I'm trying to make it like you would um, develop a product in a company, right? And one of the things that you need to do if you're developing a product in a company is you've got to be able to sell to a customer base. And having that motivation helps you know who your customers are and what they find important. Um, so it's, it's worthwhile doing that. Okay, thanks Fahim. And next up is Kyle, Kyle Bechtel. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Uh, all right, perfect. Um, I said I'm studying computer networking because I want to learn about and design a honeypot in order to help me catch network intrusions. Um, I had a hard time trying to figure out like where I wanted to go with this, but then looking at the different recommended projects that you had posted and doing a little bit of my own research. Designing a honeypot seems kind of cool to me, you know, actually writing a script for that and implementing it. I'll have to figure out all the details, but it seems like something I want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, so the, the one suggestion I'd have is let, let's try and work on the motivation. Catch network intrusions is a, 
is a, is a motivation, but it'd be nice to get something that's a little bit more. Um, so um, we're all techies, right? So um, when we, we understand what network intrusions mean, but other people may not understand that. And the aim is to try and make network intrusions relevant to finance people, legal people, marketing people, um, people outside the, the general technical realm. They might know a little bit, um, you know, with the, the whole solar winds thing. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, just to, to it, it's better to, to try and make it have broader appeal um, than, than just with it with the, the technology. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Kyle Fields, could you uh, go through yours? Sure. Um, I'm going to be designing a network based program to send and receive information. Uh, this, for just as a preamble to this, um, I thought it was a sentence for each thing. That's so okay. That's okay. Turn into a paragraph. Sorry. That's all right. Um, so, uh, I want to make a way to send and receive information from a motor vehicle to an on-site device, such as a desktop or laptop from a mobile device located in the vehicle. Uh, and I want to use the information obtained from the OBD2 sensor um, so that you can store information. It, well, it can be helpful in maintaining a vehicle, storing information, and possibly increasing performance. Um, it's a The reason why I want to do this is to provide amateur drivers with the ability to inexpensively and fully read edit if it's even possible to do that with uh, with obd2 and store information from the vehicle um so the the thinking behind this was like most people don't really have a reason to use something like this um however i found that in my specific application of like rally driving and stuff uh it is useful to actually be able to see information either on a larger screen or be able to store it for later purposes um, yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. I, I've, I'm just looking around. I, I can't see. I've got a little uh, Bluetooth ODB2 sensor somewhere, somewhere around here. I thought it was on my desk, but it's, I can't see it right now. But yeah, it, it's and it's worth what it's useful to be able to connect that up to, uh, to an app, and uh, I can certainly see how it'd be useful for. Um, uh, to store information and as you say maybe edit stuff if, if things are uh, editable okay yeah because currently the plan is to put like a tablet on a i saw it from someone else's thing it's like a tablet on a gimbal so it comes out and the co-driver can look at whatever you know if there's if it's running codes or if it's you know temperatures and simple stuff and then maybe some more complex acceleration graphs and stuff yeah yeah, I think uh, one of the apps I was using ha does the uh, the acceleration stuff, and it's it's kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Carl. And uh, Michael. Michael Poloka this time. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. You. All right. So I'm studying how to turn any fridge into a smart fridge. So I want to create a cheap alternative to consumers rather than having to buy a brand new smart fridge. And in order to help them improve their food slash product management system at home through smart tech. So pretty much this past year, I've been getting into like smart home technology, I'm really enjoying it. But certain things are just way too expensive, like a fridge costs double the price. It was a smart fridge rather than a regular one. Yeah. So if I could make a cheaper way for regular people to upgrade their fridge for a hundred bucks, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, that is certainly um, interesting, and being able to uh, retrofit is is worthwhile. I've uh, I'm probably going to uh, kill my fridge now, but I, the fridge I I have is. Um, I bought with the house so I've I've had the same fridge for uh, what's that about 17 years at this stage and I see there's it's starting to show its age um, but it's 
it's still fine um, but there's lots of other stuff that you can do with fridges now and it'd be nice to be able to retrofit that to an existing device so yeah I can see that okay thank you um, so one thing I've done is I've taken the three pieces of everybody's um, statements and I haven't on these ones I haven't done any, any editing so you can see some of them have more stuff in them than others let me just uh, post paste this link so you can have a look at it um, So that's just gone into the capstone materials um, text channel, right? And what I've done is um, the, the there were three pieces to each of your project relevance statements, right? Um, and the first one I think I did was the the yellow one. Uh, the next one I think was the pink one and then the the third element was the the blue ones right, and so that's what the color coding of the the color of the post-it notes is let me just um, maybe make that a little bigger so we can see what's happening and it's probably going to be I'm probably going to be covering up some of them yeah, it's not too bad a little bit up there but anyway Okay, so um, I the other thing I've done, and I haven't, I didn't get a chance to finish it, is um, I've I've tagged each of these with um, a, a color code, right? And you can you saw I just did there the tags. Right, networking, security, robotics, smart devices, and computing. Computing's the one I've got selected on uh, for this particular. Now the the uh, um, aim with this, and it, it's doing it with these statements is is not quite right. Um, the aim of this sort of a a, a board, if you like is to um, try and find common themes right and we've got a oh there's kyle kyle's come on hi sorry <laughs> that's okay um that's why i sent the link you should be you can um, move things around you should you can edit them you know you can do whatever um and what uh what we're going to do and this is why i want to insert another step before we do a down select um, what we can do is as a group we can look at these things and try and um, group them together right so for example um, I can uh, do that, and we've we've grouped the um, we've grouped things together under their tags, right? So there's robotics, there's computing, there's networking, and the security and smart devices, right? Um, and I should be able to undo that too to go back to where we were. And I didn't mean to do that one. But what we can do maybe is um, manually that 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 thing I just did then with the sort that was that was an automatic thing. Um, but what we can maybe do is have a look at uh, how 
Well, why don't we why don't we start with the let's sorry let's let's start with the um, with that one by tag, right? Right. So there's the, the tag, and I think was there a yeah? There's one here. So let's just um, let's just tag that one with. Uh, smart devices say and we can move that into there as well okay so at the moment by my tagging um, the smart devices and the security are the top two then then comes networking right and then computing and robotics are are a little less there. What I'd like you to do is if you can get onto the board and uh, if there's something that uh, you're uh, interested in um, uh, or you think that the one of the, the um, one of the uh, sticky notes uh, needs another tag or a, a, or the tag is wrong um, please feel free to get in there and edit it right and the way you edit it you just go and click on the the uh, the note and then this is the tag right at the moment this one's got security so uh, maybe this isn't so much security, maybe it's more smart devices, right? We could change that over. And then we can redo the... Oh, it uh, didn't reuse the existing. So have a look. <clears throat> And I'll leave you to it for a few minutes. So see, see if you can get in there and uh, have a look. I can see Michael, Federick, and Kyle Fields are on there already. So try. You should be able to just use that link. You may need to create an account on Lucid, um, but please do because I'm going to be using this and other things. Um, uh, as we move forward, certainly until we get to the um, the down select, we're going to need to play with it. So one of the things that we can do on this is, as you can see on the screen, my screen now is the, 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 the voting. And uh, so it's, it's worthwhile. Um, it's, I, I only found out about the voting yesterday. I, I had a, the, um, the people who make this lucid, um, wanted to get my feedback on their product. And they, they told me more about their product than I told them about their product or what I wanted. So I was, I was actually happy with that. Um, but uh, this is a, a way to, to do, to vote on things. So get in there, have a look. We've got, what, five people there now? I oh, know. Uh, excuse me? Yeah? Could you repeat what you want us to do in this again? Um, I just want you to go through and um, uh, if you think uh, 
some of these maybe need a different tag, right? Um, at the moment, this one here, for example, because I want to learn about and design a honeypot, I've got it as networking, but maybe it also needs a security tag, right? Gotcha. Just, just, I just want you to go through and particularly for your own, but see if there's, there's other ones there that uh, maybe we should, um, uh, maybe we should change the tags on. Cause I, I, so the aim of this sort of a, an exercise is so that the whole group gets a common understanding of what we're doing. If I do it all for you and you just sit there and look at it, um, that, doesn't help the whole group understand what's happening. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'll, uh, let me just put a timer and get another, it's a timer. Yeah. So let's, um, let's go with three minutes, right? And once, once the timer's up, we'll, we'll have another look at it. Um, and if you feel like there's another sticky that you think should be there, feel free to add another sticky. That's okay too. The aim is to, to have a look at it and try and figure out what we're interested in as a group and particularly what you're interested in and try and figure out where we go. Professor? Yeah, what's up? How do we scroll to the left or the right? Because, like, the screen is small, so I can't see anything to the right side unless I just zoom all the way up. Oh, I see. Um, I, I just tend to uh, scroll with my mouse, but I think you can, I don't know, um... So I, I'm using a, a, a Mac, so I've got a... You can right-click, too. Right-click? Is that how you do it? Oh, yeah, there we go, right-click. Oh, there we go, there we go. Thank you. Yes. All right, thanks, man. Yeah, I was left-clicking, and it wasn't doing anything for me. It was just selecting. Okay, we've got about a minute to go, and then I'll I'll set up a uh, a poll or a, a vote. Okay, I'm glad it doesn't beep. I have too many things that beep in my house. Okay, so what um, I think we can do now is uh, I'm going to get you to um, vote on your favorite sticky. Okay, let me just check that I can figure out there's no images. I don't want to go with containers, so let's just go with sticky notes, right? So you can give 
You will be able to give all three of your votes to a single object. That's okay. Um, and uh, let's go with a um, let's go with a three minutes. Right. So choose your three favorite sticky notes. Um, can vote, can put um, more than one vote on your favorite. Okay, so we'll start voting and go with the three minute timer. So that should allow you to add votes. You won't, you'll be able to see which ones you vote for and you'll be able to see that other people have voted um, but you won't be able to see what they voted for until um, I end the the voting. Yes, sir. Yeah. What's up? I'm not able to not able to go to the text channel where I could uh, vote. Sorry, you're not able to go to the text channel. Uh, sorry, who's who's speaking? Sorry, is that Fahim? Fahim. Okay, let me. Uh... Okay. Uh, I'm... Oh, I haven't added you to the the role. Okay, you should be there now, Fahim. I thought I had added, but anyway, you should be able to see it now. You should see two capstone uh, text channels: the um, capstone materials and capstone discussion. Huh. Thank you. I'm on it. Thanks. Okay. No worries. Okay. We got another 90 seconds or so. Okay, we got four out of ten completed. Very indecisive. <laughs> That's okay. It's, it's very low stakes. So uh, my, my main reason for doing this is to... I've never used this system before, so uh, I want to use it now so that I'm used to it, um, so that we can use it going forward because i think it's a uh, i i it's usually quite engaging. Hmm? it's quite engaging you're able to see everything yeah i i think like so and i mean well normally i i do this in class on a whiteboard with actual physical sticky notes right and it, it's quite a visceral experience um or a physical experience and you, you the way you is supposed to do this is um no oh, okay so there we go we're, we're done everybody's finished and our our number one looks like it's i'm a i'm designing a parking lot empty space smart sensor that's pretty cool and in order to where's the number three in order to help my customers improve their food product Juice management system that's number th two and then we've got a couple at two the solar powered drone and uh, uh, the brand new smart fridge so I think that's sort of uh, another one on the, the smart and then we've got lots of lots of single vote okay 
So, um, boats visible outside of results. What does that do? I'm not quite so sure. So you see them even when you're not in the voting page. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. Do we... Now, I, I'm not sure whether we... I hope we keep the results. Oh, there we do. Okay, so we can go back and have a look at the the favourite stickies. That's good. Okay, so um, <clears throat> that's starting to to get some coherence. Obviously, the there's lots of ones there, right? So we're we, we've got still got a lot of diverse. Um, suggestions which is good um but we there's a couple there that are, are coalescing the parking lot idea and the uh the the smart technology piece uh, are there and then the uh the the drone is there as well so they're three sort of threads that are, are starting to pull together okay thank you for that um, we've got a, a while to go before we we make a decision so uh, but it's it's good to um, start thinking about making a decision so we're done with project relevance um, if you want to update your suggestions I think they're still available in Blackboard if they're not I'll make them available until midnight tonight um, let me just quickly check no I have a uh, last pass which inserts um, JavaScript into the page and it stops some of the functionality Right, it's still open. It's going to be open until eleven fifty nine. So if you want to update your um, project relevance statements until midnight tonight, that's good. Um, I think everybody got them in, and I've graded all of them, so we should be good. So next is a little bit more involved. It's the the elevator pitch, right? And the idea here is that. Um, you spend up to three minutes explaining your idea in a little bit more detail than the project relevance statements allowed you to uh, space for and you do it in the form of a video and I, I have some example videos that I'm going to show shortly from past students and past 497 groups of students I thought the uh, tinfoil hat was quite interesting. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I put a bit too much effort into that one. Um, but yeah, it was, it was fun. Um, I, I like, uh, I, I think these days uh, something like Signal or Telegram probably gets me 95% of the way to where I want to be with that, that sort of stuff. But at the time, it wasn't clear necessarily that uh, those were... Uh, the right thing to do, but I think they, given the uh, various security issues that a lot of the other messaging platforms have had, I think they're coalescing around um, Signal and Telegram is something that's uh, a bit more secure than iMessages or Facebook Messenger or any of those. Okay, um, so let me go and do those examples right now there are these are three examples two from uh, two cohorts ago and one from last cohort and I'll go with the the one from last cohort cohort first and I hope you can hear this I think I've set it up so that it it should be listenable um, but uh, let's let's see how we go this is uh, uh, Daniel Beck and I've got to turn me off. 
and I'm saying you're back. Has this ever happened to you? You throw your dirty clothes in your washer, you go back upstairs, go about your daily life, and then all of a sudden it's 7 p.m. and you're just like, oh, I forgot to put the clothes in the dryer. <sighs> I know this happened to me way too many times. Wouldn't it be nice to have a notification sent to you saying, hey, get your lazy butt off the chair and throw your clothes back in the dryer? Just like how Uber Eats notifies you saying, hey, your food is at the door. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Oh, you can just set a timer for 30 minutes and then, you know, it'll notify you like that. But for lazy people like me and for others, I, I think it will be nice to have a notification just sent to you like that. Um, as far as the next step goes, I hope to implement this kind of technology to laundromats and some other big companies like LG, Samsung, Maytag, Whirlpool, and etc. I hope you can follow me into this journey and make people's time more efficient. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Okay, uh, that was uh, Daniel. I hope you could hear that. Was that listenable? Was that understandable? Yeah, it was. Yeah, good, was. good. Um, so the the next one, and, and Daniel's uh, Daniel's project was uh, called Laundry Alarm, and he he managed to get a, a group of people who were interested in doing that. So they uh, they did Laundry Alarm last uh, They finished it last semester, um, and I can I think I've pointed out some of the their example uh, videos um, to, to in the I think I sent out the playlist for some of the example videos from last semester okay so the next one is a I still think it's a it's a really good project idea but it didn't get selected all right um, and uh, I this one is uh, from uh, Jojo Estevez, and again, she did the, the capstone with me two years ago, so. And I'll uh, turn myself off. So. I guess it's finally time to do this video. So sit down with me and listen up. I have two ideas that I have no idea which one to use. So you're gonna hear both of them, but they all fall under the same category. So take your pick. So my problem that I am trying to solve is that diabetics have insulin pumps throughout the many years that these things have been out, they only ever made them to be used with batteries. First, it was AAA batteries, now it's AA batteries. I think it's finally time to make a rechargeable one. Only problem is, not one that would plug into a wall, because if you're attached to a wire, like I am, you wouldn't want to plug yourself in the middle of the night because then, hey, you're going to be revolving around them. So I was thinking to create like a power supply that could use your body heat as an energy source. My other problem that needs to be fixed or should be fixed in my perspective is that there are diabetics like myself who are afraid of living alone because they might end up with problems like their blood sugar dropping or them being by themselves like if they're living alone and sometimes people don't check up on them. So I was thinking of maybe doing something like trying to connect the continuous glucose monitoring system to an app that will alert family members in case anything is like wrong with them so like if their blood sugar drops for a long period of time or they're they haven't touched their pump for too long after a certain amount of time with a low blood sugar family members would be alerted to go check on their child their child adult child father aunt brother sister 
whatever. So kind of like a life alert for diabetics, except there's no button that you can be like, hey, I'm falling and I can't get up. So my target audience would be diabetics and their families, and obviously like endocrinologists, which are the doctors that take care of them. I came up with this idea because I have to deal with it on a daily basis. And I'm pretty sure I am not the only diabetic that has to deal with this. I have talked to some people about this. And it is annoying that we do not have a rechargeable battery on our insulin pumps and have to purchase new batteries every single month, every couple of weeks. And especially if you use continuous glucose monitors, they drain your battery a little quicker, et cetera, et cetera. And the next steps is to decide on which project to do, conduct a little more research, assemble a wonderful team that will help me accomplish this. Join the JoJo train. Help me improve the livelihood of diabetics. Join me. Thank you. Okay, so unfortunately the the Jojo train uh, uh, didn't leave the station, but uh, I hope you agree it's a it's a, a pretty interesting project, right? Um, the the next one uh, is uh, another project from last cohort, and uh, actually, no, this one's two cohorts ago. Jojo was two cohorts ago, so um, uh, this one is. Uh, Biju Kumar and uh, Biju um, and uh, Ernst Belliard um, did their project on uh, Biju's idea. So let me show you that one and get rid of myself. Good morning, class. My name is Biju Kumar. Today I want to talk about a pool safety device that I would like to design for my capstone project. Why pool safety? According to a CDC report published in 2016, there were about 3,536 drowning deaths happened in the USA between 2005 and 2014. That is an average 10 deaths per day. This number does not include any boating accidents. Out of these 10, deaths per day. Two of them are children under 14. For every one child died, there were another five children gets hospitalized with a serious injury. Some of these injuries, injuries include brain damage that requires hospitalization for a long time. Some of these children end up losing their memory for the rest of their life and some of them ends up in vegetative state for the rest of their lives. If my poor safety device could save at least one child from a possible death, I would consider my design be successful. Uh, there are poor safety devices available in the market. All of these devices are flotation devices, meaning it senses the mo movements on the water surface to generate an alarm. But this method also generates a lot of false alarms. For example, strong winds may make waves on the water surface which then generates a false alarm. Dogs or another animals jumping into the water creates movements in the water surface which in turn causes to generate an alarm. False alarms may cause homeowners a lot of money but that is another topic to discuss. My design of the pool safety mechanism will identify a human from an animal. When jumping into the human from an animal when, when jumping into the pool, thus minimizing the number of false alarms. It would also be able to detect a child from an adult. Once a child falls into the pool, the time will be very limited to save him or her. The first thing it, it is to detect the child around the pool early enough and generate an alarm. I want to use a different technologies including thermal cameras, laser or radar motion sensors and video analytics to filter out any false alarms. I want to design this device very compact and with affordable price range. It should work as a standalone device or should be able to integrate into homeowners existing security system. Thank you.
Okay. So uh, that's um, three examples, and you've you've seen my. I hope you've seen my uh, tinfoil hat messenger one. I'm not going to show you that one again. I think I, I put that. Um, so what uh, I'm asking you to do between now and uh, next week is uh, to uh, uh, to put together your own video pitch and make it sure it's done before our our 9.30 uh, start time and uh, if you can upload the video into Blackboard that would be good if you can maybe if you or if it's too big maybe put it onto YouTube um, just make it as a, a, a non-public one if, if that's your thing um, and uh, we'll have a look at them uh, next time but um, let's just quickly have a look at what I'm looking for right um, this is the rubric and it, again I'm stealing everything out of Professor Broderick's CET capstone handbook um, first of all you've got to identify the, the need or the opportunity right you have to have an explanation of the idea you have to know who your target audience is uh, another way to talk about that is who's interested in it what's the market like um, motivation your motivation is often important so how did you come up with the idea right um, having a personal motivation in order to get the thing done is 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 often a uh, an indicator to an outside investor that um, they th think you're going to go forward with the project. Um, you haven't done anything much yet, so there's got to be a lot of next steps that you, you need to do, but the next two or three steps, right? Usually that involves some sort of research, some sort of background reading, that sort of thing. Um, finding out about particular points that you're you're unclear of, and then the the the, the last three are about uh, uh, how motivated am I, or is the viewer of the video um, towards the topic? Right? Has a compelling case been made? What is the speaker's enthusiasm like? and then we'll um i didn't do any of the the questions on video but at the end of each um presentation of each video uh there'll be the potential to ask questions of the the person who made the video anybody got any questions about what you have to do and uh how i'm going to Graded. No. Okay. Um, it's due next week. Um, let's just have a quick look. I haven't at the assessment calendar, right? And let's get rid of the two thirty six ones just for this class anyway. Um, so elevator pitch is due on the 26th and it would be good to uh, to see them next week and for you to answer questions the aim is that each video is three minutes or less long somewhere between two minutes and three minutes is probably about right um, less than two minutes there's probably not enough information in there more than three minutes there's probably too much information Let's just go back to the assessment area right there's the the uh, tinfoil hat messenger and that is the rubric and it's basically what i just went through okay the um Weightings are not 
uniform, so the explanation of the idea is worth 20%, and an explanation of the target audience is worth 15%. Um, whether the, the explanation is compelling is also uh, worth 15%, and then everything else is worth 10% just to give you an idea of where you should put your effort. Your effort should be, um, should put, be put into the, your explanation of the idea, who your target audience is, and uh, make, every, make it a compelling argument. Any questions? Okay. Yes, Professor. Uh, this is Fahim. I upload my video on Blackboard. Oh, I saw that you. You. I, I think you. I. I had the the date down wrong in Blackboard initially. So, um, uh, go ahead. If, yeah. Uh, if you look at it, it's good, or I have to redo it. So, so let me let me have a look at it, and um, I'll I'll grade it as is. And if you think um, that there's enough. Uh, information there to to, to redo it. Um, you can re you you know you every assignment I give out on Blackboard um, should have uh, three uh, the possibility of three submissions. So if you want to if you have a if you don't get a grade that you like once I've had a look at it, um, feel free to redo it. Okay. Well done. Thanks. Okay, um, if there's nothing else, um, let's leave it a bit early. It's a little early. Um, and uh, I will see you next week. Thank you for your attention. Take care, Professor. Okay, thank you. Have a good weekend. Yeah, have a good have weekend, been. everyone.